it. We are live, double live. Um, loud and clear, sweet. Oh, I love you guys. I love that you're here. Thank you so, so, so much. Amazing. Thanks, Jen. Um, I'm just going to wait a, a second or two um, to see if anyone comes on. Um, hey, Steph. Uh, on uh, Facebook as well. Um, so while we're doing that, I wanted to like share the card I pulled today. So I like pulling affirmation cards as you might know about me. And the card I pulled was um, grounding. So here we go, Facebook and Instagram Live grounding. And so that's really interesting for me because as I'm exploring life coaching and as I'm exploring this, uh, you know, grief coaching and working with clients, I am downloading loads of ideas and ways to support people. And I think some people on Instagram will, will totally relate to this is you've got all these great ideas and you want to share with the world and you, you want to be able to give and serve, but it's also about grounding. It's also about taking the time for yourself to ground in. So this card was pretty, pretty awesome. And especially with the subject we're talking about, which is infertility, um, it's the perfect, perfect card because we get so wound up about trying to get pregnant. Why is this not happening to me? Um, how come it's happening to everybody else except me? You know, the whole why and what do I need to do? And then we just get obsessed, 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 obsessed about having a baby, right? Um, and thanks, Erin. And um, this grounding card just reminds us that we need to take the time to to ground, to anchor, to create space um, as we embark on this crazy journey or as we um, are in this crazy journey. I see that somebody is live on Facebook, which is lovely. Thank you, welcome. I'm on Facebook on my desktop, so I don't know if I'm gonna be able to see comments or, um, or, or who's joining me, so be, I appreciate your patience whilst I'm using the using Facebook on my desktop. Okay, so this is how this conversation is going to be. Okay, I kind of my intention around this live is to um, have just a really casual chat about fertility. Um, and I'm not a doctor, I'm not a fertility specialist, um, which sometimes I feel like I am, <laughs> um, but definitely not, not a doctor. So please, you know, these are the things that worked for me. This is my story. These are my thoughts and, um, and I'm sharing them with you and with everyone because it is, um, you know, National Infertility Awareness Week and, a lot of my clients are actually working through fertility, working through loss of fertility. You know, that, that loss of expectation that we have, that we can just have sex and get pregnant. And we always joke around about how when we're in our 20s or whenever, and we're like, oh my God, I hope I don't get pregnant. I better not get pregnant. Oh my God, I don't want to get pregnant. And then when the time comes to get pregnant, for a lot of us, it doesn't happen. So, really interesting. Um, so yeah, so I'm sharing my story. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to write them down on the comments on Facebook. I hope I can see them. If not, please write them down on, um, on Instagram and I will try my best to answer them. Um, and so I'm just gonna take this time to tell you about my journey um, I'm going to be completely honest with you. Um, there may be swear words um, about my feelings. Um, I, there may be triggers, and if there are triggers, you are more than welcome to leave the conversation. You're more than welcome to mute me. You're more than welcome to just take care of yourself and come back to it. 
Um, and then I'll talk about, you know, what we are now. And hopefully my intention is to yes, bring awareness, but also to help you in your journey. And, and, and if you know anyone else going through this, maybe supporting them and helping them as well. Um, I'm just going to see if, okay, here we go. That's better. Um, I hope I've shared this on the right Facebook page regardless. Okay. So my journey, I started thinking about having children and trying to get pregnant when I was 35. Because when you're 35, the doctors and everyone in your family is like, "Ooh, girl, you better get you better get going. You better get serious. Do you want children?" And I have to be honest. Like, I got married late. I I'm a late bloomer. So in my early 30s, I wasn't even sure if I even wanted children. You know, like I um, was really enjoying my freedom. I was uh, really successful in my career, and I was thinking, I don't know if I want children. And I was kind of scared to have children too. Being a special needs teacher, um, I was, you know, scared because um, I just knew what, what could happen. Um, if you're on Facebook and Instagram and you've just, just um, joined us, say hi. I would love to know who's here and where you're from as well. And so I um, wasn't sure until the doctor was like, or my doctor was like, well, Jen, you're 35. You maybe want to think about it because after 35, you know, things get difficult. I was like, okay, okay. So Nick and I, my husband, were, you know, thinking about, you know, having a baby. And um, at that time, we moved to London. And so as I moved to London, I remember, oh my gosh, I remember this so clearly. Literally, like a couple of months after we moved there, I went to the doctor and I'm like, I need to you know, I'm getting older. I need to figure out if everything's working. And he basically said to me at that point, um, well, it looks like you may be in early menopause. And I was like, uh, early menopause. What is that? Um, and he explained it to me and all that stuff. And I was like, okay, wasn't ready to hear it. I don't look my age. I was like, I'm not menopausing at 30. I think and um, so I wasn't I wasn't ready to hear it um, so we kind of tried you know not seriously tried but kind of tried nothing happened and as you ever been, if you've ever been to London yeah I know early menopause and so um, if you've ever been to, to London you know that it's um, it's a wild ride so we stayed in London for a few years and we went out a lot we we um, we traveled and we lived our lives. And then we decided to go back to Vancouver, Canada. And that's when we kind of, you know, the detoxing and like, we need to get really serious about trying to get pregnant. And this time I was like 37, 37, 38, and you know, approaching 40. And so um, I was feeling the pressure. I was really feeling the pressure. And you might, you might know that pressure, you know, when you get older and people are saying, oh, are you gonna have children? Are you not gonna have children? And and so I was feeling the pressure. And so I went back to the doctor again and I um, did all the tests that you do. And same thing, um, you know, early menopause, um, your, you know, your eggs are, are not healthy. And I was like, oh, my eggs aren't healthy. Okay, well, that's something new. Um, but Nick and I got pregnant, naturally. Um, hi everyone for joining. Um, we got pregnant naturally. We literally tried for two months and got pregnant. And I was like, damn, I got it. Yes, we're pregnant. We're pregnant. We're so happy. And I remember, um, I remember the moment because our friends Kira and Lawrence were staying with us because they had just moved back from the UK. And I like went to the bathroom. Um, hey Kate. Um, I went to the bathroom and I was like, oh my God, I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant. I can't believe it. It totally worked sex and having a baby who would have known and um thanks for the heart kate and um and then i told nick and he was like what we're pregnant i'm like yes i hold on to that moment so deeply in my heart because it was the first time i actually felt um normal i know that sounds weird but 
I was like, that was a normal moment that everyone has. Like we're pregnant and we did it naturally. Six weeks in, seven weeks in, I started to start to bleed. Got worried, got scared. Every, and then you do the Google search and it says, oh, implantation bleeding, you're fine, you're fine. Anyways, your mind goes crazy. Went to the doctor and the doctor said, well, you need to go to, for um, an ultrasound. And so went for an ultrasound and that's when we found out we had twins. So I was like, oh my gosh, we're pregnant with twins. How amazing. And, um, and how scary. And they were identical twins. They shared the same placenta. Sadly, starting at that day and then until the end of that pregnancy, it was all clinical, all medical. Our worst nightmares came true. Um, I was bed rest. <coughs> bed, sorry, my voice is changing, energy shifting. Jessica will we'll get that. Um, <coughs> I was bed rest for that entire pregnancy. When we got to 22 weeks, we saw three specialists and the three specialists had said to us, um, your life's in danger and your twins are not gonna survive. Um, so we made, had to make a decision at that point. And so we had to say goodbye to our twins. And if anyone had to, has had to go through that, um, having, you know, a d and &E or a DNC or any kind of surgery with regards to, to being pregnant and a miscarriage, it's, it's terrifying. It's scary. It's a loss and a grief and it's everything in between. Um, and it was the oddest experience. And unfortunately, I have to be quite honest with you, the medical system, the doctors that I was with, so unsupportive and we need to change that we really need to change um the way that women are treated in those hospitals um and it may be that you've had an amazing experience and I, i'm happy to hear that but that particular experience was not great um okay cool um, that, that experience was not cool. I mean, I remember the doctor saying to my husband, okay, now you can go out for a nice romantic dinner with your wife, like make sure you take care of her. And I'm like, okay, all right. Um, anyways, I soon after developed a blood clot, um, and I was back in hospital again. So after losing our twins, I didn't have the opportunity to mourn and grieve like I am mourning and grieving Loie because my health was in danger. And then some of you that have gone through the surgery, some of you that have gone through a miscarriage may be really familiar with that story, how you have to go through the um, operation and then afterwards, depending on your care, there can be complications. And I've known a few people and some of my closest friends that have had to go back and do it again because something was left behind or there's scar tissue. So if any of you are, are struggling with infertility and in your journey that's coming up, and I hope this doesn't happen, but if it does happen that you have to go in, or if you know somebody that may have to go in to get a D and E or D and C, oh, please let them be aware that they need to be really um, diligent and advocate for themselves um, and make sure your partner, you know, if, whomever that partner is and whomever your support system is, it could be your mom, your dad, your best friend, anybody knows to be able to ask the right questions as well. It's so important. You can't always think that they know everything. Um, we would hope so. And it would be amazing if they do, but um, it'd be, you know, it's important to, to advocate for yourself from my experience. Um, so I didn't get a chance to grieve our twins, um, and I'm grieving them now as I grieve Loie. And so I then went from being obsessed about my blood clot and trying to take blood thinners, thank you for the hearts, trying to take blood thinners, and went to being obsessed about getting pregnant. 
Now, all my friends who are going through infertility and going through the IVF process and the IUI process and the egg donor process, and I'm going to get pregnant naturally process, every any kind of process will understand the obsessed nature that you are in when you're trying to get pregnant. It's like the only thing you want. It's the only thing you want. And it just blindsides you from everything else, from your relationship with your husband or your partner or your or your friends, everybody, because it's all about getting pregnant. And of course, because your attention is on getting pregnant, everybody else gets pregnant. Everyone else gets pregnant. And you're like, oh, why is this happening? You know, your ego starts to play with you. Why is this not happening to me? And then you just try your best. So I did everything. I did holistic acupuncture, reflexology, um, the medical system. I went and, and saw a fertility expert. Um, I changed my diet. I took all the toxic materials out of my house. I took gluten out of my diet. Um, I did the genetic testing, which I found out I had Hashimoto. Um, I have an autoimmune, but I also have MTHR, which um, when you do have that, it's like a genetic, uh, a chromosomal mutation where it's hard to get pregnant because you don't process folic acid properly, plus you don't um, uh, use vitamin D properly. So I was just like, you should have seen me. I don't know if you guys can relate or not, but I literally had like 10 bottles of supplements every morning and I'm just like chugging them all down. I lost myself. So I lost my fertility. I was in, you know, grief mode. Um, I was in, um, I was, I went through something so traumatic. So I was actually in a very sensitive traumatic state and I didn't realize it. I kind of pushed it all aside because I was so obsessed about getting pregnant. And I always tell my clients to really look into that, really <clears throat> be comfortable about how much time you're spending trying to get pregnant and how much time you're spending on trusting trusting that it will be okay, trusting that you are on your path, trusting that everybody has their own journey in this fertility relationship or journey. Um, because what I do was unhealthy. I was just completely obsessed. And being a school teacher, and my friends in the UK will know this, I would work at schools where like everyone got pregnant. And there was one school that I worked at that people joked around like, oh, don't drink the water, you might get pregnant. Well, I didn't. I actually had a miscarriage at that school. That was, again, part of my journey. Um, and so we were living in the UK at this time when I had that when I had our miscarriage, and it was early on, and it was um, it was kind of scary. Um, and then Nick and I kind of took note, and we we're like, right, we need to. Um, we need to figure, we need to figure our shit out. So we went and tried to do IVF in London. And that was unsuccessful because of timing. And also uh, we moved to the States. So as we moved to the States, of course, my first thought was trying to get pregnant. It's always is, right? Try to get pregnant, try to get pregnant. And um, so we saw a fertility doctor here and he again did all the tests. And this time I was ready. This time I was ready to hear that my eggs weren't weren't great and the funny and that I don't, uh, it is funny as i was as i went through my loss with our twins as i was going through infertility treatment and as i was starting to talk about it more family members started to telling me telling me oh i struggled with infertility oh it was hard for me to get pregnant and i was like really I really, really would have loved to know that earlier. I really would have loved to know that earlier. I don't know, maybe it would have helped. I don't know, maybe it wouldn't have helped, but it's nice to know your family's history. So if you are in the middle of your infertility or your fertility journey, or you're thinking about getting pregnant, ask, ask your family their history about trying to get pregnant, because that is so, so, so important to know. Um, because on my mom's side, women have have had trouble getting pregnant. Didn't know that. 
Um, so I know uh, this is a long story. Um, so we went to see a doctor in Seattle. He was amazing. He basically said, you know what, it would probably be best if um, you do an egg donor. I was ready to hear that. I was ready to hear it. And we were in such a good position. Um, we were very, very lucky. And so we went ahead and I got pregnant with Blowy. And it was an amazing experience. Yes, I was bedridden for the pregnancy. It was a high-risk pregnancy for so many reasons. And when I was in the depth of my grief when I first lost her, it was hard to see the blessings. It was hard to see the gift. But as you move through your fertility journey, as you move on to the next thing and the next thing, you start to realize that it's really about trust. It's about taking those emotions, learning from them, creating, finding your strength. Oh my God, it's so about finding your strength. Um, and also finding your community and finding support, people that support you, that understand, that can hold space for you, but also people who just want to go out and have a glass of wine, who want to joke about it, who want to find the humor in, a, humor in it as well. It's so, so important. Um, but it's such a freaking balancing act of emotions because you feel jealous, you feel anger, you feel confused, you easily fall into the victim martyr role because, you know, all you want to do is have a baby. Isn't that just about having sex? Like, you know, this day and age, people are getting, wanting to get pregnant older in their older age or their, or we have so much toxics in our system and, Anyways, there's a lot of different things and different reasons. Um, I'm just going to be conscious of time as well. Um, if you've just joined us and I haven't said hi, I'm saying hi now. I'm just in the middle of sharing my story. I'm about at the end. So if you have any questions, you can always pop them in on Instagram or on Facebook. Or if this is the replay, welcome, welcome, welcome. Please write your comments. I will do my best to respond as well. So we got pregnant with Loey, and it was an amazing experience. And I feel so blessed to have been pregnant. I feel so blessed to have been um, carrying my little girl for nine months, for 39 weeks. Um, it wasn't, you know, there was obviously the anxiety because we lost our twins, but um, it was a really special moment. And again, like I said, it took me a while to figure that all out. And I hold that close to my heart. And then 39 weeks and four days after a really nice barbecue at our friend's house, the morning after, I woke up at 5.30 in the morning, excruciating pain, and um, went into the hospital. And that's when we found out we lost Louie. They basically said, um, I'm sorry, but there's no heartbeat. And so we did what we, have to do, we had to do, and it was a beautiful Delivery in the grand scheme of things, um, I'm feeling very blessed that I went through that. But then I go, went into complete shock, as you do. And I don't even remember the first couple of months after losing her. Um, but my intention to sharing this story, and I'm so honored that you're here listening to me and my story, is because Loie and I and my twins would like to bring awareness to this. We'd like to hold space for other women who are struggling with fertility. You may resonate with some parts of my story. You uh, may not, but maybe you may know somebody that will or is. Um, and I hope sharing my story has given you some comfort and um and there's a lot of loss and grief and transition in in all that infertility and you know i was speaking to someone about this yesterday a client of mine and she's like you know within fertility there's loss but it's a quiet loss that no one talks about because it's not tangible. It's not like when I speak of grief, people think, oh, someone died. And I have to put, you know, we go through the burial ceremony, we go through the celebration of life and, and all that. But with fertility, there's none of that. And a lot of women grieve by themselves. 
And I say, no, grieving and loss is part of life. And let's be more open. Let's take the shame away from it. I know people feel scared with grief and loss, but I think whilst we talk about loss and talk about grief in fertility, then we're able to help people heal. And maybe within that healing, people will find success. People will find faith. People will be able to find hope to move on. Now, everybody's journey is so different, so different. My journey is different from a lot of people, and maybe it's somewhere from other people. But as we talk about it more, as we bring awareness about it more, then it's going to be easy to ask people about it. Don't be afraid if it's a trigger. You know, maybe it is a trigger, but that's okay because we move through the trigger and it's okay to cry around your loss. It's okay to feel frustrated. It's okay to feel pissed off. When we look into that anger, that's where we find our healing. That's where we can find and understand where we're coming from. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please write them down. I'm hoping I'm not missing anybody's um, oh, questions. I just touched something on. There we go. Um, yeah, so that's my journey of fertility. So where we are now? Well, we are looking at maybe um, other options, you know, surrogacy, um, adoption. We we don't want to give up. We don't think this is our last, the last chapter in this book. We, I really feel deep inside my core that, that it's not. Um, even though I feel that I am mothering uh, Loi and our twins and, and parenting her, and I believe the twins were boys, so I'm gonna call them boys. And the boys, um, through helping other people, through holding space, through coaching, um, helping women understand the loss of fertility and how they can gain strength from it and move on and create a plan for the future. That is how I'm honoring my babies and being the mom that I want to be, I guess. Um, wow. And I was scared that I wasn't going to be able to talk for 30 minutes and like literally I've been talking this entire time. Um, so let me know if you have any comments. Um, if you have any questions, I'm definitely an open book and I, I, I just want to be able to, to help people and bring awareness to this. Um, you know, it's something that I never thought I was going to be. Um, I'm interested in research info around high. Uh, oh. oh, love. Yeah, I, I totally understand. DM me um, your email. Uh, Lisa and I will let's talk or in the um, the comments I'll, I'll email you my um, connection call booking thing and let's let's just talk let's talk I will totally help you through that um, I um, I forgot I was a saying when I was answering oh yeah and by the way grief brain it, it, it exists I know I probably shouldn't be using that as an excuse it's been almost a year but <laughs> Um, I forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> if anyone remembers, you can let me know. But anyways, um, I can't believe I've actually talked for like 30 minutes about this, but it's really something that's very deep and, and something that I, um, that fills my heart and I definitely want to hold space for other, other women. And I want to be able to know, to tell you that you're not alone. You're not alone. Um, and, and it's not the easiest journey. It's not, but we find our strengths. We find our strengths. We find our strengths. Um, uh, thanks, Kate. I'm so glad that you're here. My uh, sister-in-law is on Facebook listening to this, and I'm feeling pretty, pretty um, warm inside that she's here. Just going to send her a little message. Um, it's got three fabulous children. Um, yeah, so it's 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 been an honor, an honor, an honor to have you here. If you're again watching the replay, please, you know, please share your comments and questions. Um, I will probably do a few more of these just um, 
to talk about and share my story, but also to, to help and to create community and awareness about all this and, and how important it is to, um, to talk about, you know, the loss and grief with infertility and our health is also another thing that can, can um, be a part of the, our fertility journey. Um, so I'm gonna respect our time. It's been 30 minutes of girlfriend chat. Well, me telling my stories and me doing most of the talking. <laughs> um, and before I before I sign off, I just want to let you know that um, the journey is not not easy, but it's up to us to choose what we do with this journey. So you have the choice of being the victim. You have the choice of falling in the depths of the grief and the lost. And sometimes we do fall into the grief and the loss. But also you have the choice to live your life with it, to learn who you are through this process, to be able to take the gifts from it and live the life that you want, to be able to hold yourself as you move forward. So as crappy and shitty it is, it's our choice to be able to, what to do next. And I hope that you choose you. And by choosing you, you heal. And by choosing you, you are creating trust and faith and hope. Um, I love you all. Again, direct message me if you need anything extra, if you have any questions. And have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the likes. I really appreciate you being here and spending time with me. Bye. And remember the card, grounding. Remember to always ground. Okay, so I'm gonna end the videos. And of course, I'm like having to play around. Oh, there's the end button. Okay. Lots of love. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Ciao. Bye, Kate.